I received a free copy of Killing Adam in exchange for an honest review. I would rate Killing Adam 4 out of 5 stars. Story. Given the title, Killing Adam can assume that the book is about, well, Killing Adam. Adam is an artificial intelligence and the first of his kind. Now, I know what you're thinking. Great, another story about an AI that wants to destroy all of humanity. How original. Well, stay with me and I might change your mind. The author wasted very little time getting to the story and then kept me wanting more the rest of the way. His descriptions and thought out world made getting a good mental image easy and entertaining. The ending was somewhat predictable though. I never found myself wondering what the ending was going to be, only how the author would go about creating that ending. Overall, the story was entertaining and enjoyable. Characters The author managed to write the characters in a way that not only showed their traits through dialogue, but also through their actions. I felt like I was able to connect with the characters on an emotional level, especially in situations like when Adam claimed James Mahoney's wife was cheating on him in the Arknet. James got dragged into the events of the book without knowing what was going on, but continued fighting against Adam with the hopes of getting his wife back, and it was so believable. I felt like I understood James' pain, and I understood why he would continue to involve himself in this impossible fight. Crazy Beard somehow managed to be both philosophically intelligent and funny at the same time, providing comedic relief in a well-written manner. The author also used Crazy Beard to provide some foreshadowing. However, I felt that the foreshadowing actually hurt the story. I mainly feel this way because the foreshadowing was quite obvious and took place right before the event it foreshadowed. It was like being told the ending of the book two pages before you read it. Still, I found Crazy Beard to be really likable even if you played no real purpose within the story. Trixie was smart and quick on her feet. However, there really wasn't much to her as a character. I never felt much of a connection to her and felt that she was only in the story out of necessity, but I suppose this could be because of what she is. Yes, I'm using vagueness here to avoid spoilers. After all, what's the point of a review with a spoiler? Jenna was another character that I enjoyed a lot, but unfortunately, she wasn't in the story very much. As a result, I felt that some of the character development was rushed or had holes in it. For example, at one point, she makes an implied move on James Mahoney, and then at the end of the book, with her only showing up a few times in between, she seems like it was only a momentary feeling and that she was over it, leaving me feeling like I missed something. I really like Jenna, and I think she could have been a neat character if she had shown up more. Given the circumstances of her character within the book, though, I understand why she was in it so little. Adam is very human-like in a good way. He comes across as human, just a very calculated human. A few short chapters are written from his perspective, which I personally liked a lot, as it was nice to get a look inside the mind of a narcissistic artificial intelligence and see his motivations. He is driven and motivated in a human-like way, but has a cold sense of do what I have to do in order to get what I want mentality that fits the fact that he is an AI very well. World building. World building is a vast topic, so I'm gonna break it down into two parts and discuss them each individually. Physical world. The physical world that the story of Killing Adam takes place in isn't anything significant as it just takes place in a slightly futuristic city. Individual scenes are well described and give a good image to the reader, but as a world overall, it was nothing groundbreaking. The part of the physical world that the author did describe well were the cars and the way they moved around the streets. Now, this ties somewhat into the second half of world building, but on the physical description side of it, Eric Bean did an amazing job of giving the reader a solid mental image of just how precise and calculated driving is. When writing this review, the term flowing river keeps coming to mind. Conceptual world. A big task of any fantasy or sci-fi writer is determining how the magic or science their fictional world has would affect that world. For example, a fictional world with plasma cannons probably wouldn't be wearing gambesons and chainmail for armor. I understand that this part of writing can be quite difficult, but Eric Bean passes with flying colors. He didn't just invent the arc that is the focal point of the story, he came up with how it interacts with everyday items such as coffee makers, elevators, and refrigerators, to name a few. The author also makes usage of the arc implants seem casual, which they would be if they were an everyday item in which society was built around. Thank you for watching.